two minutes. All right, welcome to another edition of the Ultimate Fantasy Locker Room. I think I jumped in front of you because I wasn't sure. <laughs> and you definitely, we had to. I wasn't sure if you were going to say anything. We were going to so. let it play a little bit because I had to play the intro with it. Oh, well. oh, you want me to do it again? Well, uh, I mean, we don't have to. We could just this is see how are. it goes. Yeah, This is who we are. So we anyways. Could, we could shoot off the cuff right now. and We all, we yeah. all practice like an intro. See who has the best one. We'll have the viewers vote on it. I don't know that. No. <laughs> All seven? No. Uh, <laughs> oh, we're up to seven? Yeah, I think so. Sweet. So, uh, well, we're, we're well, you guys can't see, but we're welcoming Larry, uh, Larry King, Larry King live to Yay! our, uh, hey, to, the, to the bunker. Uh, Larry is a friend of mine and uh, has many, many years in TV and radio and wanted to come check out the studio and give us some pointers, so. Work accepting pointers. Our, yeah, there you go. Glad to have you. So, what I, like you guys have? I like the nickname, the bunker. The bunker. Well, right yeah. off. Yeah. Oh. La- Larry has uh, Man. Larry has a studio called the Underground Bunker. Yeah. Uh, and so I, when I'm was, with Larry, it I was a, it was an ode to Larry because yeah. I was actually thinking that we should probably at some point um, come up with nicknames for for our viewers too. I know on YouTube <laughs> channels that's pretty. You know, it's pretty common where they come up with, you the know, desperate a name, ones. <laughs> name, name for, you know, your, your, your groupies. Yeah. Well, and d- maybe start uh, now while we have the seven, that way those seven feel really special when we get up to like 18 and yeah, then like yeah. into the thirties. What does, what does La- Lady Gaga call her fans? Monst- monsters. Little, little monsters. Like monsters. Like okay. So why don't we do that? I tell you what, I'll feed somebody for a year. No. Chick-fil-A. If they come up with a good nickname. What's going oh, on? I'm, here, getting, I'm sorry. <laughs> the robots are coming to get me. <laughs> My God. Yeah, that scared me a little bit. I thought we were dying. Do we have to, do we have to run? Yeah, yeah, we do. Please. Anyways, so how are you guys doing this week? What's, uh, what's new? Yeah, not a whole <laughs> lot for me. I was, I was uh, talking to Phil on the phone. Every time I talk to Phil mm. on the drive over, That's every serious. time, yeah. his phone drops. I haven't had somebody drop a call with me in like 20 years, but every time I'm talking to Phil, it drops. Well, I'm on a back road. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm in a the back sticks. road in 1985. <laughs> I, I, where, what, well, how does that happen? Nobody uh, else drops a phone call. Do you not get good you, reception on your Motorola razor? Yeah. What's going on? Here? First of all, I had a razor. Okay. <laughs> we need so that. don't disrespect the razor. Well, and that's it because there's a bone of contention because every time we text, He's the he's the guy without the Apple, without the iPhone. Yeah. I think you're all sheep. Yeah, well, we're all sheep, but yeah. my phone actually doesn't drop. My phone doesn't drop anywhere else except that road. I can tell. And you know what? You know what I will do though. Yeah. What? I will save the thousands of dollars yeah. and the hundreds every month to have my call drop on four seventy four. All right. Well, it's dropping. Me I mean, what, what 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 is the call that's dropping? Talking to Rocky. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that's worth an extra. Ooh, three where? grand every every three years. Where the years. hell are you paying a couple thousand dollars for a phone and then? I'm saying, what? How months? much is an iPhone? I'm very cost? important. Uh, I have about what? Eleven hundred. Many leather bound books. Oh. And oh. my hey, brand where, new. Where do you shop? Of That's how much they cost when they launch. They're like eight hundred bucks, nine hundred. Oh bucks. yeah. No, they are like a how. It is like a down payment now. But but you pay it off over like two years. That's smart. Yeah, you I paid mean, off over not? two years, and it's then so it, stupid. It breaks like mine. Mine is broken. It's or, broken. Or every Such time a waste of money. Every time there's an upgrade, all of a sudden you start dropping yeah. calls on the iPhone. Yeah. Like I'll never. A, like yeah. you're using a Motorola Razor on 474 on the on the back road. So, <laughs> anyways, you guys are a little too so, toity toity for me. So uh, we're not going <laughs> to talk about the weight loss challenge because I feel like it would be abject. You haven't weighed. I have not weighed, but I am feeling. Like you lost agile, more. yeah, and he we know has been eating. What kind of bread were you eating? I I, I didn't catch that. Uh, it was Mexican sweet breads. Yeah, it was a gift. I didn't know that was a subcategory of breads. Well, every culture makes a bread, Rocky. It's just bread, right? You just well, no, no, is no. there not a difference between white bread and Italian this is, bread? This is loaded with sugar and some kind of frosting. Yeah, it's like a like dessert. A this bread checkered pattern. So who made it for you? Dude, it, no, well, my wife picked it up from the market by her job oh. as a thank so you for wife. watching the kids. Yeah, which so is your really, wife which is, is really contributing kind. to 
his eventual death at Sabotage. a young age and the <laughs> well, and us singing the I, damn song. I think <laughs> that we're all expecting Mark to be able to control himself and his consumption. Why? Well, I mean, I know better, but my wife, you what know, she's you? innocent. She's just <laughs> what evidence do you trying have to bring to a gift. Prove that to be true. Well, I mean, she's probably not thinking about it in well, terms. This, this is what I think that I am. What, this is what I think is going to happen, and I think I think this because I pray to God it happens. Okay, we're going to be losing weight steadily the whole time. The last month, he's going to like hole up in some cave and lose more than we lost. No. That's, that's the, what I think. That's so. the plan, fellas. I don't think so. So anyway, I don't know if it'll work. Anymore. If a guy I mean, can't hit a curveball, he doesn't just start hitting it last month of the season. Sure, you do. Yeah. Anyways, practice, practice, homie. Talk about you pra- what do you pr- you practice and eating? Yeah, all you got to do is go cold turkey. There you go. No food. Who's that, that guy works. that eats the <laughs> Nathan's <laughs> hot dogs? Are no <laughs> food, no air conditioner. <laughs> Joey, uh, Joey, I forget his. <laughs> that's he's like Joey a, Chestnut. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> he knows him. He's you familiar. Like, What's well, he's like? Follows him on Twitter. <laughs> I have his poster. He's a hero. He's that, yeah. Probably, probably above your bed. Um, what do you wow. guys think of uh, the bourbon? It's actually pretty good. Saint, it's a, Saint Augustine uh, bourbon. Not, it's it's not, not your favorite. No. How do you feel about it? I, I like it. I'm saying it's pretty good compared. To, I, I mean, I've had some of their other stuff, and careful, I, there could be a potential sponsor. <laughs> no, it's I think great. they're just so. I think they're so early on in their process that you know it's just going to take those years of. It was of not really, cheap. It was expensive. I mean, uh, that's the other problem. And <laughs> this is the thing, and and I don't mean this in a negative way. I, I think, think it's great. Yeah, you think it's great, and yeah. I think it's really good. So do I. Let's edit the previous part out. <laughs> I don't. I don't mean this negatively because I think this is how you should feel after you have a good drink. Call that a qualification. Yeah, I feel like I'm drinking your money. A bowl of cigarette butts. Okay, well now since we scorched dirt. No, no, no. In in a good way. No, I don't like know that, how that could be good wait, because when good? you drink, you smoke, and like I, it's just part of the ambiance. Okay, it, so I get what, a all right. Smoky. So here, I get what you're doing here. Yeah, so it reminds me of a dive bar. If that's what you're saying. No, I actually wasn't. It reminds me of my dad. I think he was <laughs> I think that's my dad was smoking, think making it's me kind eggs of on the stage. Parallel <laughs> over the, over the kitchen, he was making me the yeah. eggs, smoking. This tastes like damn it, meat. Rocky. So, <laughs> where, where does the where does the taste for the for the actual cigarette butts come in then? I don't well, my eggs. In the eggs. <laughs> in my eggs. So, anyways, so today, what are we going to be talking about today, guys? What are we talking? What, where are we going to go? Let's go. Uh, I'm going to pick Dealer's Choice here, NFC South. Let's talk okay. about the NFC, NFC South. South. So, and and we are. We got to tell you guys, warn you guys, maybe yeah. uh, that we are going to do a draft event. Uh, we are going to be live, yeah. and uh, we are going to be picking before the actual teams pick each one of us yeah. to see who gets the most right or wrong or all of them wrong. But um, we got to turn it into a, the roulette. Oh, that too. Yeah, yeah, we do. We have to have a bet. Yeah, so we'll, we'll do. We'll out. come up with something. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. We'll come so up with some terrible. We're going to be live on YouTube, on our Ultimate Fantasy Locker Room. We're also going to be live on our TikTok at the Ultimate Fantasy Locker Room, and I, I think it's undecided whether we're going to go live on Instagram as well. I don't know how to go live on all of it, yeah. so it's up to you guys. Can yeah, you? I just don't know if it's if it's. I mean, we might be able to do both, but we would have to use. Are we going to be here? Different phones. Where else will we be? I don't know. In Cleveland is what I'm hoping because I did have my friend come. Listen, I don't live this rock star lifestyle that you yeah, live. That I'm I in, just have hey, I'm in, funds available I'm, to take these trips. In the I'm middle inviting of you. Listen, I have a job. I'm inviting you to live this rock star lifestyle. This guy, you know, to, he was shopping for mansions. Oh, I know. Right? Did you see the mansions uh, he was looking at? I saw yeah, his price range, too. It's, it's I'm over good. here rubbing two pennies together to pay my rent, and he's showing me, look at this. That's going to bite me. Look at yes. this. Yeah, that, I knew. I should have known that this. was going to 5,000 square feet. What do you think of that? I think I would like to live in the closet. That'd be nice. <laughs> you know what? That could happen. <laughs> would there be any cooking involved or cleaning? No. <laughs> <laughs> look at this. My butler staff. All yeah, said, so what do you think? All five of them have their own. All right, they have I, their own wing. Their own five bedroom do apartment kinda, down on the water. I kind of walked into that. You want to fly? You want to fly out Thursday? Hey, what? listen, thirty bucks to fly to thirty bucks to listen, fly to Cleveland. I, I haven't. I haven't seen this. That. I haven't I got, seen it. I got 
I, I could have. Where did they put you on draft the wing? Invitations for us. Really? So we could be there live. Oh, why so last night? In the greatest city in America. I mean, okay. Who doesn't wow. want to go to Cleveland? <laughs> it's, 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 I listen. I'm on record saying I love Cleveland, but greatest it's city a, in the it's world. It's a bucket list. He's he likes Chicago. So compared All right, to that, see, this bucket, is. You ever see? You ever have like a friend that tells you about a movie and they really am, and then you see the movie and it's not that great. That's what you're doing right now. That's what you say about Hoboken. <laughs> I don't say anything about Hoboken. Hey, what's your favorite? Dude, pizza Hoboken's place sweet now. Oh, my favorite pizza yeah, like, place in Hoboken? Yeah, like the fame. It, is there one that you considers to be like, that's it, that's pizza? Because um, I saw a special a, last a night. a handful of them. Uh, growing up, the best one was probably Benny Tadino's. Torna's is pretty good. And then... What was it? Torna's. Yeah. They have a Sicilian slice that's like out of this world. And then uh, I think 10th Street Tavern right now has probably the best slice in the town. Okay, anyways... I don't know why I went there, but I don't know why you went there either. But we were talking about Cleveland pizza. We were talking about flying out. So let's go back to this for thirty dollars. Which I listen. I think I have. uh, I think I have invites. I don't know know if I'm comfortable flying on anything that would charge me thirty (laughs) dollars. You get an Uber. Yeah, it's scary. Cheaper. I mean, more expensive than that's crazy. I mean, to be fair, you're flying to Cleveland, so. Yeah. Or on a single engine Cessna. <laughs> Listen, I don't care how. Are we they get dropping to... us off in a in a crate? Do we have to we land. We have to start the propellers up ourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, Larry actually says he's he's actually flown in that kind of plane. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So he he's here. He's alive. So who cares? I've I've actually flown. Have you ever flown on Allegiant Air? Yes. Oh my! It's like it's like flying. It's like a bus with wings. It's like it's like flying on a folding chair. <laughs> it's like it's like a folding chair, and not the, like the it's, cushion. It's not good. It's, it's like, like the s- the wood, <laughs> you know. The wood. And they one. land at the airport like <laughs> ten miles from the real airport, so that so that nobody can see them. <laughs> okay. The airport doesn't want to be affiliated. It's like uh, it's what like- I it's what I picture the Mets stadium seats feeling like <laughs> forty years ago. <laughs> That's what it was like. The and shea then seat, your the shea seats were bad. Your uh, crunch, you know what was used to be bad? Up uh, like this. JFK, not JFK, uh, LaGuardia. Do you remember LaGuardia? What, the airport? Yeah. I, I've actually never flown in or out of LaGuardia. I've oh avoided LaGuardia at Anybody all here flown to yeah. LaGuardia? It's like landing in a bus station. Yeah, no, I did. I mean, I they think had most like of New York seats, like, and it was like 2008 or not. I, like, I think most of New York is like landing in a bus station. I well, you see, JF there. Kennedy's beautiful. I mean, Kennedy's beautiful now. Yeah, yeah. Kennedy, I hear good things about Kennedy. No. We, I we fly are. into Newark to save like a nickel. Yeah, Newark then, is, listen, yeah. New York isn't like as bad as LaGuardia, but it's nothing special. It's just a bunch of concrete. Yeah, I mean, now you can take the, my God, you take the train right from Newark right into yeah, Center City. City. Yeah. But, uh, Although you can't go anywhere right now, so oh. yeah, yeah, they, I hear it's bad too. I hear there's a lot of a lot of looting and stuff up there. I don't know. All right, I'm sure the fans appreciate this deep dive. <laughs> deep dive on New York City. <laughs> Bud Light, suck one. Yeah, uh, so, so I I need to know as soon as possible if we can make this happen. Uh, I, listen, I, I have tickets I have on a, my phone right now. I have a boss that but how I have many to do you answer have? to. Okay, so let me. I'm going to stop interrupt. This show and I'm well. We'll keep, keep talking. We'll start yeah. talking about the NFC South. So. And I'm actually going to ask right. how many tickets he could get because I think he'll let us stay at his house. Really now? Yeah. See if he could get four. how many are you try. You got anybody else you trying to bring? I mean, what do you want to bring? Your like your second cousin? My or? family. <laughs> I want to bring my. I can tell the wife, the kids, <laughs> the family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I got that many. Oh, just see what you can get. Yeah. Huh? All right, I'm going to check. Ken, if you're listening, I don't think Ken is, but he reached out and got tickets for at least me. So. Yeah, uh, so it's one of those things where we have to wait outside and like, what, do you, car what do we you? what do we have to do for them? <laughs> huh? What do we we'll have to do for later. these tickets? Not me, you guys. Okay. Oh man. So NFC South. All right, let's do it. I'll just right, jump. Who right do you in. want to talk about? All right, let's go. Uh, I'll go Atlanta. Let's start off with the with the Falcons. Dirty Birds, the four and twelve Falcons from yeah, twenty twenty. They were abysmal uh, with so many potent weapons on that offense. Antone's yeah. former team, impotent. Yeah. Sorry, and they they were, uh, you know, four and twelve. I I don't know. You want to say it sounds like an anomaly, but I mean, we've seen this from the Falcons in the past. We've seen them choking the Super Bowl and up by. When did, when did they go points. to the Super Bowl? What year was that? It was three, yeah, three years, years ago. ago. I mean, so it's honestly, it's not that long ago. No, and they no. should have been able to run it back a couple of times. Yeah. I mean, when you have Julio Jones, you have Calvin Ridley. Uh, they had Todd Gurley in his prime, you know. They well, had a decent. Uh, no, they didn't have Todd. Who was? I'm, who, I'm sorry. Then he got Todd Gurley. Yeah. Devontae, Freeman. Devontae, Devontae Freeman. Devontae Freeman. But who did they? 
who did they lose? Nobody remembers. Who did they lose? You tell us. Your coach. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. That's fair. Right. It's been downhill since, since yeah. he left. Yeah, but still, I mean, you would still think that with the caliber of players that they have, you know. Especially in offense. <laughs> Yeah. So, so real quickly, we are going to go ahead and do what we've done every show in this series. We're going to pick the three that we would draft in fantasy. Yeah. But who do they get? Who do they lose? So let's see. So they picked up Mike Davis, which I think is a huge pickup in the fantasy football. Yeah, you're all hot for realm. Mike Davis. Well, it's because they haven't had you know, Gur- you know, Gurley was a shell. Gurley was a shell of himself. Ito is a good back. But yeah, he's and- more of a third and brian hill i mean so that Ito and and brian splitting carries behind Gurley. Gurley showed flashes of brilliance Gurley showed flashes of when he was actually in his prime with the, got a rams, nose for the, with the rams i don't know why the hell i said that yeah. but anyway uh-huh. um you know so i think mike davis comes in and immediately picks up all those carries that are left yeah. left on the table and mike davis looked good last year yeah. with carolina yeah. looked like he was a three down back right yeah well mm-hmm. let me tell you they weren't going into week one in carolina saying you know, Mike Davis is getting a lot of first team reps. Mike That's Davis sure. is probably yeah. getting zero first team reps, and then bam, McCaffrey out, and yeah. Mike Davis just has to step right in. I think he did. I think he did a yeah, superb he, job. He did an admirable job. He did. Yeah, yeah, he did. And I mean, he was putting serious fantasy points on the board. So you bring in Mike Davis, right, to take over to take over. Uh, you know, the bulk of the carries there, and another, maybe not so obvious one on paper, but you bring in Cordell Patterson, right, from the Bears. This is a game changer in the fact that he can change field possession, right? Yeah, yeah. So he's going to take a punt, he's going to take a kickoff, and he's going to move you, you know, deep, deep in your, you know, you're you're starting on your side of the field, but around you know 35, 40, or he's going to take it into the into the opponent's side of the field, and that's where you're starting your possessions, which gives your very potent offense even a little bit more push to be more potent. So hopefully this four and twelve turns around. So, and, and I think. Patterson is actually a pretty decent change of pace back too. I mean, he really has looked good. You know, he's, he's actually shown pretty decent, yeah. you know, carrying skills. He runs a little upright for me. Yeah, you it's know. just never been over an extended period. So right, no, I mean, no, absolutely and not. small sample size yeah. too. Yeah, but I mean, if you need a guy to come in and kind of change it up, but again, you have so many weapons. You know, they love to give Ridley the ball you know, close to the line of scrimmage to see what he can do. Yeah. And then, I mean, do you have a more dynamic wide receiver in the league than Julio Jones? I mean, the guy is just, he's an absolute monster. Yeah. For my money, you know, unfortunately, I, I don't know why he and Ryan have never really had that, like, Rodgers-Adams connection. Yeah, he, he just doesn't score as many touchdowns. And but, you think yeah. that Julio should go off every single year and be, you know, top two wide receivers, and it just, yeah. you know, it doesn't happen, He just doesn't punch it in the end zone. So who do they lose? Anybody uh, of note? No, not really. And then they went out and they signed. I mean, I th- I feel that with the seven, they signed seven defensive players all to one year contracts. Yeah. So I feel like they're hanging on to the fact that hey, let's Maybe try to run more, this run back. back. Let's mm-hmm. see if this really, you know, let's see if four and twelve was a fluke. Let's see if we can let's see if we can win some games. Mm-hmm. So they signed a bunch of guys to one year contracts, and if it doesn't happen. They can cut bait, and they can start all over again next year. I mean, there was yeah. huge trade talks about Julio in the offseason. None of it came to fruition, probably because they figured, let's get another decent back in here, and let's see what we can do. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, so then who would your three be? It's got to be Julio, Ridley, without a doubt, and then I'm going Mike Davis because I think you're going to get pretty good value on Mike Davis a little bit further down in your fantasy drafts, and I think he's going to end up scoring a boatload of points. Same. Okay, so... Uh, Julio scares me. You know, I've had him on my team before, and when he's playing, he's pretty consistent. Almost always averages 100 yards or more. Doesn't score enough touchdowns for my liking, and he's just proven to be injury prone. And it's even worse. That's that's fair. It's not even big injuries. They're like small, nagging injuries. I think this could be the year where the switch happens, and it's Ridley and not Julio. Yeah. I also would love to see what their offense looks like if they draft Kyle Pitts oh my God. at four. Oh, wow. That'd be insane. Yeah, because then I think you've got a, a, a good running back, a catching running back, a tight end that's a receiver, and then you got Julio and Calvin well, I Ridley. Girl, I think Gurley is, is Gurley a free agent this year or no? I believe. I think he might be. I think he so. was, yeah. 
Yes, right? I think I, I I thought he was, but it could just be biased because yeah, I no, can't believe they signed him for more yeah, than a year. Yeah, he's a unrestricted free agent. Wow. So I would so go. Not be back even. I would go Ridley, Davis, and I'm going to go Ryan again mid mid round quarterback that I think has upside. Yeah. Only because Julio has burned me before. Don't say, I'm telling you, save your mid round. Take him later in the drafts. Yeah, he'll be because Ryan probably. Ryan's available later in the drafts, and then you know if he has the kind of season that you're you're predicting, you're going to get. He's cool. not that far <laughs> removed from top value. top three four quarterback. He's, he's got not far. He won that MVP that year. They went yeah. to the Super Bowl. So yeah. I mean, so. He's, he's got targets. So let's see. All right. So who wants to take? Uh, let's take the Saints because we're kind of going to share them a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean. What do you guys think about the Saints? So they signed Nick Vanette. Yeah. Tanao Kapasa Ganon. There you go. Is that? I don't think that's even I think close. that P might be silent. Because. <laughs> <laughs> Kasaganon. Kasagan. Hey, we're just going to go with Kasaganon. Uh, they signed a fullback, uh, Alex Samar, and then maybe one of the bigger signings for them is actually re-signing Jameis Winston. Yeah. So they're going to come back, uh, or they're going to ride it back with the human interception. Um, <laughs> what do we What do we think about the Saints this year? I mean, we know they were in salary cap hell, so, I mean, it's not surprising uh, that they didn't really go out and make any big splashes. Um, Other than the Taysom Hill contract. Did you see? Yeah, yeah but it's, that, I know. Yeah, none it's of all it, voidable. None years. of it's like guaranteed. It's like all voidable, but it's yeah. just, yeah. it helped them a little bit out of that salary cap. Yeah, out. when I first saw it, I thought, what the hell are they yeah. doing? Yeah, and I, then I realized the voidable years. And so I think the Saints team, you know, I hate to say it because, you know, they've got fantastic weapons. It almost seems like an impending dumpster fire to me. Well, they lost a decent amount from their defense. Yeah. I mean, they lost uh, Trey. Uh, who was the number one edge, maybe number two edge that was mm-hmm. in the free agent yeah. market. Um, I don't know that he's as good as – I don't think he's going to be that player with the Bengals. Yeah. I think he was that player yeah. with that line in New Orleans that was pretty stout. And uh, that's fair. Saints had a pretty stout yeah. but, front line. But they still lost. I mean, he was a quality player. Um, so what do you guys think? Who are you – who do you want? Oh, mm, I mean, it's I tough. probably I would. What's tough for me is the third player. I mean, the first two were obviously yeah. all going. So I would go probably Alvin take Kamara, the flyer, and yeah. we're going to go uh, Mike Thomas. Mike Thomas. Mike I mean, have, Thomas. Where does Mike Thomas? Where did he come from? But no, the Ohio State University, oh, Sean. Boy. You son of a. Sorry, Good Lord, Sean. <laughs> Sean had a baby, and now he thinks he's above us. <laughs> <laughs> I I might take a flyer on Jameis. I, listen, he produced in Tampa. He always produced. If you were, Every year. If you were able to take away the 32 interceptions. But that was one oh, year I'm he did that. He always threw a lot of interceptions. I'm but not he, saying he hasn't. But that was one year that it was but ins- fantasy, insane. Fantasy, fantasy-wise, still scoring through the roof, yeah. even with all the interceptions. And he's he, he's not a fast quarterback, but he's a physical runner. Yeah. So he is something you have. You know, he's good for 10, 12, 20 yards a game. And if we're talking just football, I mean, he's going to – Playing with the best coach he's had in his career, too. Yes. Guys, Sean Payton. You know, Drew Brees, when he came to the Saints, was... It was he wasn't Drew Brees. Yeah, they no. were not sure. He wasn't. Him. They weren't sure about him. They were draft, They drafted Phillip Rivers. He had a shoulder injury. So, you know, some of that has got to be attributed to him. I mean, Sean... He was with New York when they went to the Super Bowl with Kerry Collins. Revived his career after he got cut by Carolina, the alcoholism. So, you know, he's a proven, we already know this, but I'm just, you know, he has a track record. Yeah. So I don't I, think he I, can't fine-tune Jameis Winston. I would go with that three. And and Jameis looked okay in limited duty. If he could cut those picks in half, throw 32 and 15, you're, you're happy, I think. The only thing that worries me is they didn't sign Hill for no reason. Right. And what role is he going to be? So that's the point I was going to make, is I, I don't think Jameis is going to be the every down, every game quarterback for the saints and, and that worries me a little bit but 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 you know what that's never happened in the pros where you've had that i mean you had that one year miami did kind of the wildcat yeah but, but it wasn't very often I, I i agree with you but i don't know how it would look or work in the nfl i, I just i don't i worry that each one is on a short leash and they're just going to play you know they could potentially play the hot hand i the thing i would do if i were new orleans i would actually put uh hill at the slot yeah 
and, and make him the third wide receiver. I and think that's more likely. Up. I don't think he's going to factor in as a quarterback very much at all unless Winston gets hurt. I mean, when, for all the interception stuff, I mean, he was a first overall pick. He has talent. He could throw. I mean, for sure, he's a gifted passer. He's not. Yeah. He's not a slot. He's better than Mariota. He just, you know, that was the big difference between him. Mariota's a little too conservative. He's a little more loose with the ball. So I think he has the talent. Taysom Hill, I mean, is reflected with the contract. I, I don't think they want to want him to do too much. I think he's a gadget guy. Change pace up. Yeah. All that type of stuff. Which is, which Larry, is fair. One minute. Okay. Larry's giving us the one, All right. the one minute. You know, I... For me, you know, I said impending dumpster fire. What's going on with the Saints right now is when you do run it back one too many years in the NFL, you end up in salary cap hell. Yeah. You end up with you end up with your top end players that are so good, it's going to be hard to restructure or re-sign them to long term deals, you know, with lucrative money, which they're going to demand, while also bringing in the talent that you need to, you know, to sustain. So you know, winning. Would you take Jameis or who's your third? I'm, I'd actually go Latavius Murray, okay. and I think Murray's going to have enough carries to warrant having him sitting on your bench. Especially, you know, I always I always take that best ball uh, approach to this. I think he's going to have enough carries where he can ha- score a couple of games that'll make up for some of your your duds from your studs at the running back position. What do we think about their tight end? Is it Troutman or is it you know yeah, Van Ness? He's, he's got a he's got a you know. He got to prove himself. I mean, Vanette's got some upside. I've always liked him, even when he came out. You're just saying that because he's from the Ohio State University. <clears throat> I mean, he's uh, clearly a smart, intelligent no. human being. All right, I guess we're going to transition to the next team, and I think Phil, you're going to cover uh, the Carolina Panthers, the North Carolina Panthers. Is it North? Are they? I don't know. The- yeah, they're they're in North Carolina. Okay. They are in North. I, just, I wish they would like. They're outside Charlotte, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. I I want truth. In the NFL. They want to represent both states. But I want them to be North Carolina. I want the Giants to be the Listen, New I Jersey Giants. They should be the New Jersey Giants. Yeah, I want the Jets to be the New Jersey Jets. Yeah. I'm not going to argue this point. You know, I don't know what Chicago, where are they in Chicago? Jersey, Jersey don't get the credit Jersey deserves. Yeah. No, they don't. No, I mean, there was a whole big controversy about that back when they won their Super Bowl. But There's actually some discussion that. I mean, do the Brooklyn Nets even play in Brooklyn now? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do, so. but. So there's a pizza place in New York that claims to be the person who brought pizza over to Tonos, but then there's another guy in New Jersey that says he brought it over. Yeah, who knows? So, I mean, it's going to happen. Everybody so what's up things. with the, what's these are up? nuggets? Nuggets of knowledge. You know who did hey, bring? Go pizza do your over? own research. I'm just hungry for pizza, guys. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, hey, I haven't hold had up. pizza in a long time. Hold up, hold up. I tried that video you sent. Which one? We tried it Sunday. Oh, the damn you? <laughs> With oh, the Totinos? The Totinos. The Totinos. How was it? It was great. And oh you know God. what? I was in the store today, and I seen the Totinos, the one that the Takis ones with the mozzarella. I was going to grab them and give them to you. But I said, I don't want to sabotage the guy, so Listen, let me not do that. right now. But those yeah. Totinos, let me tell you something. I put them in the air fried and deep fried them. That would have been a conspiracy. Because that's just... Savage. That would have been a conspiracy theory, sabotaging two of us in one week. No, <laughs> but I didn't. So I put, well, I mean, you guys are going to make me sing, so it's, I wouldn't want to sabotage you. But <laughs> I air fried them, put them in the bowl, some fresh garlic, about uh, two tablespoons of butter, a bunch of Parmesan, shook it. Oh, my. I mean, let me tell so you. Did, you. did you eat it alone? No, or? me, the wife, the girl. I mean, that bag was gone in about 10 minutes. It was delicious. Let me tell you what, man. Right now, football Sunday, a, we we should do them for the draft. If there was a pizza right here, yeah, you'd eat it. Oh, I would be aroused. You fold it like, in half. I, I I would have. Excuse like, me. Oh, I'm telling you, I would have erotic thoughts about a pizza because it's disgusting. <laughs> I, a pizza's a. Are we a, talking about cheese or supreme? Oh no! You, I first of all, people that just eat cheese pizza, I don't get. I'm gonna be honest with you. I tell you, that's a, that's my favorite. It's I the standard. It's, it's the sausage pizza. It's the standard. I mean, and that's what do you want a burger? You want a cheeseburger? <laughs> you want you want a burger? Whatever I want with peanut butter on it, tomatoes, but, but the, pickles. But what do you? No. I mean, cheese you know? is like the. Bun. I can appreciate it. Cheese is like the. No, bun cheese on a is pizza. a cheese is a cheeseburger. It's a cheese pizza. No, you got to have pepperonis. You got. You don't have, have to have any of that. Yeah, you do. No, I'm not. I'm not against it. I'm just saying you don't have to. But I judge I mean, a pizza. I just think it like if I want to compare the two pieces, I get a cheese slice here, cheese slice there. 
I mean, you yeah, add all the toppings, you're dude, convoluting with the pizza. But you're only half Italian, so let's trust the expert here. See, I, actually, I don't know how Italian you are because 99. There's been, Italian, the, I mean, I haven't seen your ancestry.com paper yet. One percent Jewish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> actually, I'm eight. This is true. Eight percent West Egyptian. African. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> I'm something. I don't know what I am. That's my dad, I think. So. Anyways, talk about the North Carolina Panthers. The North Carolina Panthers. I mean, this is not a free agent signing, but Sam Darnold, I think, changes things a lot. Um, we all, I think, we all, all of us here, have different feelings about Sam and you know what he can be, what he wasn't, what he is. Um, but either way, I think he is an upgrade as far as potential over Teddy Bridgewater. Um, so, you know, maybe for those guys that are still there, it's a bump. He's reuniting with uh, Robbie Anderson. Yeah, and, and Anderson's evolved and become a better player since he left yeah. New York. Yeah. The only thing that concerns me, though, is that... They lost Mike Davis. They lost Mike Davis, but I'm lost talking about Curtis with, Samuels. with Anderson. Well, they signed uh, David Moore. Yeah. yeah. But to me, the thing with Moore's a speed guy, down the field guy, and that's kind of what Anderson was with Darnold. Uh, he kind of evolved last year into more of a well-rounded receiver. So I just don't know to see how that plays out. But, I mean, I guess if we're looking at the other guys they signed, I mean, Dan Arnold is somebody I think I spoke to you about before the show. Why do you like uh, Dan, Arnold? Dan Arnold? Dan Arnold because, well, last year I think he had uh, the highest depth of target out of any tight end in the league. And also, I think the highest passion rating for any quarterback throwing to a tight end with over 40 uh, targets. So, I mean, it's a lot of potential. There's nothing really yeah. solid, but it's not working, is it? The you got the volume turned down. Not, you know, I turned the volume down. <laughs> it tried. Did, but, you know, I mean, ass. it's really a toss-up. I but am the smartest man alive! I felt was. like that's what you were But for those guys there, I think it's going to be I think Donald's a plus. Now, for, as far as the team or where they finish at the end of the year, that's kind of still up in the air because he's not going to take care of the ball the same way Bridgewater did. Yeah. But he's going to offer more upside. So, to me, that's Robbie Anderson, more touchdowns. I, I, I wonder, honestly, because, you know, Teddy the Glove did a pretty damn good job last year. I mean, If you look at the numbers, though. I, I mean, watched back some of those games, man. What he had to work, like, you know, he – He's a he was a consistent like he's a good field general. Yeah, well, for a team that ran so much through Christian McCaffrey, yeah. and then all of a sudden he's out, right? And you're like, oh god, here we go. Now we got to do all of our our B side plays that we practice. You know, I think he did good because I mean he's got weapons, right? So DJ Moore is a fantastic wide receiver. Yeah, Robbie Anderson is a fantastic wide receiver. Curtis Samuel played out of his mind last year. Hopefully well, he can yeah. continue that in Washington. But I think that's a big loss. And I do think yeah, Mike Davis, like who's taken over now for the Mike Davis role? Well, you don't even need it. If, if Christian yeah, McCaffrey if McCaffrey's is healthy, healthy, you don't even need Mike Davis. And I assume he's healthy. He I, has to be healthy. He I, I, hope, all I hope so, but if I'm them, I'm stashing a, a, a backup running back. For sure. Just in case. And yeah. I honestly think if Atlanta's not going to sign Gurley, I wouldn't, wouldn't mind putting bad. Gurley on yeah. there. That wouldn't be yeah. a bad, you know. He's a similar back style catches, you know. I yeah. just think the thing with Bridgewater, I, the the move, the reason for the move is that I just think Bridgewater reminds me of a Tyrod Taylor. It's just, you know, there's a ceiling with him. And I think with a guy like Darnold, you know, you can have your three touchdown, 300-yard game. There might be two interceptions involved. But the upside, I think, is way higher. Like, I wouldn't roster Teddy Bridgewater last year unless I needed to. Yeah, right. yeah, Darnold, I consider for a couple weeks. starting, depending on, like, he. I think this year, especially, like, the first half of the year when we're kind of feeling things out, it's going to be a matchup thing with Darnold yeah. where I start him. Bridgewater last year, I wasn't starting him unless I had no other choice. Right. I think that's the difference. Which is a fair point, and that, that's actually a really good point. And Darnold, like you said, you know, we've all, we've all heard that Darnold is – is supposed to be a really, really good quarterback, right? And he's shown flashes, flashes of brilliance, but he's also shown flashes of he doesn't know what the hell he's doing out there. Yep. So I'd like to see uh, – personally, I, I want to see him thrive because I think he landed in the right situation too. With now, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he's got weapons. He's, he's got a lot of playmakers. Uh, another tight end that Carolina rosters, which was – he was supposed to have a breakout season last year, was uh, Ian Thomas. Yep. And, it you know, it didn't happen. So, you know, you have Dan Arnold. If you have Ian Thomas, if they start to, you know – 
exploit the the slower linebackers in the leagues with two tight end sets. Who knows? Darnold might be on to something. What's interesting about the the connection there with Darnold and Robbie Anderson is that Matt Rule, too, was interviewed for that Jets job, and they didn't give him the job because he wanted to bring in his own coaching staff. And in hindsight, obviously, it's 2020, but, I mean, they would have been well-served keeping him there, and you might have had this marriage two years ago, and the Jets might be three years into a rebuild instead of starting all over. Start pulling, I, yeah. I, I don't – I wanted Darnold when he came out of the draft. He actually was the one I wanted more than Mayfield. I think I was wrong. I yep. absolutely say that. Darnold always threw picks. Yeah. In college, he did. He did it in the Jets. I don't think that's a Jets thing. I think it's a Darnold thing. And it's concerning because if yeah. you're throwing them in college where guys are a lot yes. more open than they yeah. are in the yeah. NFL. He was throwing passes in USC to some of the best receivers and still throwing interceptions. And so. not only that, I mean, let's face it, USC has you know half their season's a cakewalk too. Yeah. But, but that being said, I just don't get – like maybe Bridgewater wasn't the – you set the world on fire. Yeah, but my God, you got to be pissed if the guy you're going to get replaced. If you know, I mean, if you trade for Aaron Rodgers, hey, okay, I get it. I'll go sit in the bench. Yeah, right. But if you're getting, I mean, it you know, it's like a a conclusion that they're going to be uh, benching Bridgewater. And I just I don't know about that. I think Bridgewater has shown flashes of brilliance. Um, I think when he came out, I think he looked pretty good his first year. He got that terrible injury. So I I just want to put the brakes a little bit and say maybe it's going to be a Bridgewater-led offense. But all that being said, who are your three? Well, we this, is why I'm just, cause this is why I'm talking like because I heard this a couple of days ago. But it's uh, the Broncos are kind of rumored to be trading for Bridgewater. And they're saying wow. it might go down by draft day or during the draft. Wow. Okay. That's so, a possibility. And I, if I'm Bridgewater, I'd be happier with that. Well, it's and being reported by the Big Lead, Sports Illustrated, Is it being Denver reported Post. by Jared Sheffer? You, you've got it. No, <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, I've, heard, I've been hearing this for a few weeks. So you've I've got to get been, it past the big dog. You've got to get it past <laughs> Elway. Can Elway actually choke on his pride and say, you know, Luck's uh, not my, or Lock Elway, is not my guy? Elway likes a big-armed quarterback, and that's not Bridgewater. Well, I think they still want Lock. I think Bridgewater would just be... An insurance okay. plan. Okay. So they got Von Miller coming back. They didn't trade him. They, they're probably trying to take another stab at it. Yeah. All right. So give us your three. I mean, come on. CMC, obviously. Um, I would go Robbie Anderson. I'll go out on a limb here, and I'll say Dan Arnold. Here you okay. got Rock. Uh, yeah. I, you, know, you have to go CMC. I, I, I like David Moore and Robbie, to be honest with you. I like them both. Um, but I would probably go Robbie. And then I, I'm not going Darnold. I don't know that I have three on this team. I'm just going to be honest. What about DJ Moore? I mean, DJ Moore's are, for me, they're clear-cut wide receiver one. I think he's going to be the, the focal point of this offense. I, I, let me take that back. I, the focal target. Yeah, I like him. Offense. Although that's not true either because CMC gets like 100 and some odd targets. Yeah. So it's so hard because CMC, so much of this offense is dependent on McCaffrey. I just think that, that there's a lot of, yeah, I, I guess if I had to choose, it would be DJ. DJ Moore. And then I, I agree. So CMC, DJ Moore, and I, I think Robbie Anderson. Because I think Robbie Anderson brings that, that field stretching he does, dynamic. Yeah. And he's going to, you know, he's going to go up and he's going to contest balls. And I think, I think Robbie's going to be, again, a beneficiary of, you know, a, a very solid run game. Right. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to the Super Bowl champions. Uh, the 11-5, and five, which I'll be honest with you, I didn't realize that they had finished 11-5. and five. I thought they had finished 12-4. and four. Um, Tampa Bay, and they didn't do a lot in free agency. Well, they excuse did a, me. They did a ton. They signed Geo, and I think they showed how serious they are about repeating. <laughs> By signing Giovanni Bernard. I'm just going to say that. I think but it's a good signing. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyways, this is what they did. They signed 21 of their own free agents. Yes. And that's really what they had to do. They let Brown walk. Yeah, they did let Brown walk. They, um, oh, they did today. That's right. It, it came out today that he's yeah. done, which is kind of. Did he sign somewhere else? 
Or is it just he's, he's like, yeah, I'm over this? No, they they didn't sign. I don't. He's just not going back. I don't know if somebody else is going to pick him up. I thought or, that yeah. they had re that they had negotiated a resign. I thought they did, but the, no. Yeah, no, he's apparently asking for big money again. Like he's a wide, like he's wide receiver one all over again. I yeah. think he could be though. Uh, I'm not saying he couldn't be, yeah, but but he's not in a position. I don't to, know. Twelve yeah. years in the league and Tampa Bay took a chance on him. Very few teams would have last year. There would have been a handful of teams. Yeah. So I don't. I feel like he owes something to them. But anyways, neither here nor there. I think Tampa's in good shape. If I had to name my three, as much as I would hate to name Tom Brady, it would be Tom Brady. Uh, he was consistent enough to be a, a top five, top seven quarterback. I don't see that changing, even though he's a hundred. Um, I I don't know which running back I love. It's a, yeah. it's a crap shoot. Yeah. And I like if if Brown isn't coming back, I would feel very comfortable taking the other two wide receivers sure. and Godwin and uh I'm blanking on his name, but uh Godwin and Mike Evans. Mike Evans, Mike Evans yeah. So that would be my top three, Brady, Evans and Godwin. That'd yeah. be my top three. Yeah, I think it's gotta be mine too, just because that back I mean so you think you think that back I am the smartest man alive <laughs> You think that backfield's okay? Then they go out, they get Leonard Fournette, and then you're like, all right, so they're going to go with Fournette now. And then it's still a lot of Ronald Jones. And then they still try to factor in Keyshawn Vaughn towards the end of the year. Yeah. And then they go out in the offseason and they get Giovanni Bernard. Like, what does that really say about that backfield? Well, the crazy they're thing like, is... We're not giving the keys to anybody. Can I get Fournette from the playoffs? Yeah, Play, right. Playoff Lenny. Yeah. Playoff Lenny is Be, good. But Lenny. I don't know that that guy exists during the season because the knock on him at LSU is... He would go out with small injuries that wouldn't take out a lot of backs. And he he just doesn't seem to be there for the preparation. He's yeah. a, he's too big to be getting. So he's, he's Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, well, except for without Le, Le, stats. Le, Le'Veon Fournette. <laughs> I mean, Le'Veon was like had light good, years good, better than yeah, good, a lot of good year, Fournette. Good years, so. I don't know, man. Le'Veon only had like two good seasons, didn't he? Two good seasons. Didn't he? It wasn't. It wasn't very long. I'm gonna punch up the stats on Le'Veon Bell. You I, guys are speaking I, amongst yourselves. I think I mean, it was he, more than two. If it was, it wasn't I'm gonna look many. it up. You guys keep yeah. talking. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's that's the end of that. My thought is, if I could get playoff Fournette, I would take Fournette, and I think that Arians is bright enough to start him if that was what he had all year. It just doesn't seem to be who he is all year. He yeah. seems to take games off. Um, so I think that's why they mix in Ronald Jones. I don't understand. Like, you think Giovanni Bernard is a good signing. I'm wondering why. Like, what am I missing? Because they have three backs already. And uh, one one that's a pretty decent pass-catching back, which is why they drafted him in Keyshawn Vaughn. Yeah, I don't know. I think just Gio's a more proven guy. It's depth. I I don't know. I just it's not bringing a winning uh, tradition. Would I rather start Keyshawn Vaughn or Geo? I'd probably start Geo. Yeah, I mean, I think it, he's a better option. As a, I mean, you might have to. If this. you don't trust playoff Lenny in the regular season, and you know uh, Rojo is kind of in and out, he's hurt a lot. I don't think Geo Bernard's a bad signing at all. It's depth. I would like to see what the contract is, but anybody taking a bite on Gronk? No, really. Now you, you come in. Why? He had one. His stat line last season was two. You know, one for two uh, touchdown in a, in a lot of games. Yeah. I mean, I think he had five or six touchdowns. So not only that, I mean, OJ Howard. They, they drafted him for a reason. And last year, I, I think he was going to be the man, right? And then he went out with an Achilles. Yeah. Early on, was it in camp or week one? What, but they were saying like he was finally rounding out to be. You know, here's the playmaker that Tampa Bay drafted. Now you bring in a veteran. Quarterback Brady accomplished. He loves his tight ends. OJ Howard's going to break out, and then unfortunately the injury. So I don't know if I can trust. You know, Gronk. Well, they still have Cameron Bright too, right? Do they? I don't. I don't know if they. they I don't know. know. I don't yeah. know if they resigned him or Those not. Stats are taking a long oh, time. Oh no, well because I'm reading. He had about five good years. Okay. See. Yeah, I'm trying to look this up too. So he Let's had see. 2014. He had third about 1,400 yards, eight touchdowns. Uh, then he had 83 receptions for 850 yards receiving. Yeah, three good seasons. Following year, 550. He only played six games, though. He missed a lot of the time that year. Uh, so he was good for the five games he was in. And 2016, yeah. 
1268, seven touchdowns rushing, uh, 75 receptions, 616 yards receiving. 2017, 1291, nine touchdowns rushing, 85 S- catches, 655. Sat out 2018 because he thought he was Sat too good for the league. Anyway. No, he just wanted to get money, man. Well, he cost himself money there. It was a bad move. Yeah, it was a bad move. In hindsight, it was pretty bad. Yeah, it was the death of his career. So, yeah. anyways, I think we all have the same three. And uh, I don't know how we got on a Le'Veon Bell tangent, but. Uh, I compared him to, to <laughs> Lenny. Yeah, not the, even close. The fat yeah. Lenny. But fat Lenny had three good years, too. Uh, still not. Yeah, not I mean, I, I think it was a different level. You'll forget about years. Leonard Fournette in five years. I don't know why you get. I'll forget it. I already forgot about Le'Veon Bell. Go. Yeah. Anyway. You just mentioned them, so. So, uh, <laughs> what are we going to talk about next week? I think we're talking about the AFC South, Rock. Yeah, AFC South, and then uh, we'll that have rounds our, us out, and then we'll have our draft episode, our live draft episode. We're gonna put out, well, we're gonna do our own mocks, and we'll put them when we're doing the live show. We'll kind of flash them on screen so everybody gets a nice peek. Yeah, so we got to do a little homework actually, and we got to make sure you yeah. know because there's a, there's yeah. a lot at play there. To be honest with you, this of of I I, I will say this of the thirty two picks. I have 23 players with a first round grade in coming out of college. So there's going to be some maneuvering. There's going to be some jumping over each other, maybe a few trades. Yeah. Um, I think teams after 23, it's just almost, is it better to trade out? Yeah. And pick up more picks for the next year or, you know. But you could be wrong. I mean, there's a lot of guys that get drafted after. The, yes. I think it's going to, I think. Organizations with a proven track record of drafting well will probably move up late first round and probably grab a guy you're not thinking about or vice versa. And I versa, think the number back. of quarterbacks is going to push some of the people I have with a first round grade back. That's into true. Yeah. Rounds. I I have a fe- I have a really terrible feeling there might be some teams really reaching for some quarterbacks here in the first round. Happens too. every year, buddy. Every I th- year. And I think one may be the Patriots. I'm just going record to say that yeah. I think the Patriots are going to trade up. Well, I'm hearing country. I'm hearing that they're trying to trade for Jordan Love. Wow, take that, Aaron Rodgers. You know, I I've been vocal about I'm not. You know, I've been watching more and more tape on Trevor Lawrence and. Pair that with what we brought up last week about what he came out and said, like you know, yeah. the the not being sold. This isn't the end of life. But he kind of walked. He kind of walked it back a little well, bit because the blowback, yeah, a little bit. But outside of that, I I think every quarterback past him is a reach, and I even think he's. Kind of, I don't. I don't know that he's a franchise quarterback. I think he's the best quarterback this year. He's the best quarterback this year. But I think that there's too many. It, it's too much closeness this year. Like, I think any of these guys could surprise us. And I think it's very possible the best quarterback might not come till second or third round. Seventh round? Yeah. This is is the year for another Tom Brady. Tom Brady, yeah. Another Tom Brady is born. It's quite a claim. Uh, I tell you what, with Lawrence, I just can't get past that hair. I just. You like it, huh? No. I don't like it at all. I don't like it at all. Okay. You guys got that meme I sent you? Little herbal essence going on? He's got more body in his hair than Kyler Murray has body in his body. Oh, no. <laughs> I said that joke a couple Tell weeks everybody how to. No, dude, I said that it was a meme. No one else saw it. Our, our it. seven viewers didn't see it. <laughs> Tell us. Well, guys, it. you can find us on Instagram and YouTube, The Ultimate Fantasy Locker Room. Check us out on Instagram as well. We'd love to see you, hear from you. Leave us a comment. Peace. It sounded white. That was, that was horrible. <laughs> I thought it was we great. Just, we just vanilla you down. Hey, man. Yeah, we have one. You've become one of us. <laughs> for you know, you'll be looking for. I didn't know point. speaking proper was exclusively white. Sorry. <laughs> you'll be looking for one point eight million dollar properties. <laughs>